What kind of compression ratio can the Mazda CX-5 get with that? Well, what a coincidence. We're getting 13 to 1 compression right now on 87 octane gas. Uh, and in Europe and Japan on premium gas, we put 14 to 1 compression. So this is stuff that we've only seen in race cars before and never on street gas. How are you able to do that? A lot of it actually is the same technology used in race engines. Mm -hmm. uh, the cam timing that we're using, the kind of piston design that we're using, uh, the exhaust manifold is designed to really suck all of the exhaust gas out and get the hot stuff out so the cold stuff can come in. A cold, fresh air charge doesn't want to knock as easily as a hot one does. Um, all that stuff is really race engine design that we've trickled into the street. And the, the trick is using the, the new uh, injection technology that we've got lets us use this race technology and still get clean emissions and get good fuel economy. Um, that's the trick, is, is it's really the same stuff that we do on the track, but making that happen and work on the street has been uh, impossible until now. How much compression ratio uh, does one look at when they're looking at horsepower and torque? Well, there's definitely a relationship. The higher compression you get, the more torque output the engine will make. Horsepower and torque are very completely connected, so you'll hear the engineers talk about torque uh, output, and you'll hear the marketing guys talk about horsepower output. They're talking about the same thing. But theoretically, if you increase the compression ratio, you'll keep increasing the torque output of the engine. Um, in reality, you run into the point where you start getting knock, uh, and then you have to adjust the, the tuning and you lose all your torque benefits. So really the trick with this engine was how do we get this really high compression and, and keep all of the efficiency and keep all of the torque. Um, those race engines that are running 13 to 1 and 14 to 1, they're doing it at really high RPM. And it turns out it's easier to sort of run high compression at high RPM. You're not as likely to knock at high RPM because knock takes a little bit of time for it to develop. And so if the combustion of it just happens so quickly at high RPM, there's no time for it to knock. The, our big challenge is doing this at 2,000 RPM. We want to make a lot of torque down in the RPM range where you're cruising most of the time. Um, that's really how you get the, the big fuel efficiency benefits. So it was a huge challenge to get this engine to operate at that high compression ratio, making high torque at low RPM. Would it be better then to look at compression ratio, fuel economy, and price? I think what you want to look at is, is fuel economy, price, and actual driving performance. Because horsepower and torque ratings are based on the peak horsepower and the peak torque. So that it makes the peak torque at a certain RPM. Well, if the peak torque is at 5,000 RPM, that only matters to you when you're at 5,000 RPM. When you're at 2,000 RPM, you want to know how much torque it makes at 2,000 RPM. You want to look at really, don't worry so much about the numbers, drive the car and see how it feels. Because just the torque number and the power number won't tell you how the car's going to accelerate, because it doesn't tell you how light it is. This is the lightest SUV in the market. It's also the most fuel efficient SUV in the market. It also happens to be the most fun to drive.